Good morning. It's great to be with you this morning. I'm going to be your MC here for a few hours, and uh, what a great day, huh? You've got a guy coming in later on today who might be doing something later. We'll talk about that in some detail. But uh, your first speaker this morning is Scott Parkinson, who is the Vice President of Governmental Affairs at Club for Growth. He has over 17 years of experience taking on the swamp and actually having to work in the swamp during that time. Uh, he's worked for three different United States senators after serving as executive director of the Republican Study Committee, which is the largest conservative caucus in the House of Representatives. In 2018, he was Representative Ron DeSantis, chief of staff, a guy you may be hearing from later on today. And uh, of course, we know Governor DeSantis went on to become Governor DeSantis. Uh, he joined the Club for Growth, where he has advocated for economic freedom, opportunity, and liberty for a long time. He resides in Arlington, Virginia, with his wife, Carolyn, by the way, who is a Greensburg, Pennsylvania native, I found out a little bit ago, and uh, their four children. Any Greensburg people here today or Pittsburgh people? Huh? Okay. Anyway, he has, uh, since the gubernatorial transition uh, in Tallahassee, he has joined the Club for Growth, and he is an outstanding young mind here in the country. Looking forward to hearing a lot this morning from Scott Parkinson, the Vice President for Governmental Affairs for the Club for Growth. Give him a nice round of applause, would you please? Well, good morning, everybody. It's an honor and privilege to be back once again with the Pennsylvania Leadership Conference. I don't know if any of you remember my speech from last year, but each year, Loman Henry gives me 15 minutes and he says that I can just talk about whatever I want. And this year, I'm going to try not to embarrass him. I was thinking maybe we would just take 15 minutes to talk about slowing the spread of socialism. Well, you know, there's obviously going to be a lot of big speakers here. We've got my former boss, Governor Ron DeSantis. He'll be uh, introduced by former Congressman Keith Rothfuss, another good friend of mine. I know we've got other people, Bill McSwain, Scott Perry, and my predecessor at the Club for Growth, Andy Roth, who's the executive director of the State Freedom Caucus Network. Andy will be here in a little bit, too. So I'm a dad, I'm a husband, and a neighbor. My wife and four children and I, we live in Arlington, Virginia. And you might be wondering why I'm here, but I do this weekly radio show with Loman on American Radio Journal, and I get to give that Washington update. My wife and two of my daughters are right over here. I just want to tell you guys I love you very much, Natalyn, Paislin, and Cortland. For 10 years, I thought I would be a girl dad. And 14 months ago, we actually had our first son. His name's Prescott. People often ask me, were you excited to finally get the boy? But I think the real excitement was from his three older sisters. Unfortunately for them, I'm the, not the kind of dad that actually says yes to everything. But when Paislin and I go to the grocery store, she loves to buy flowers, and I usually say yes. And Natalyn, sometimes she asks for help cleaning up her bedroom, and I usually say yes. Raylan, my three-year-old, she often asks for a bite of dessert after she's already brushed her teeth and she's ready for bed. I usually say yes because that little girl, she really loves chocolate. And a lot of the time, as a dad, I just have to say no or don't do that. Slow down and stop. In 2020, at the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, America needed more conservative leaders to say slow down, stop, don't do that, and no. You see, three years ago, my worldview changed pretty significantly when COVID hit. For most of my career, I'd worked on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., in the United States Senate and House of Representatives. But I learned pretty quickly that Congress doesn't know how to handle a, a crisis. They know how to manufacture a crisis, maybe in a lab in Wuhan. For the past three years, a familiar phrase has been, did you test positive for COVID? Well, as a father, COVID tested me. In 2020, Natalyn, my oldest daughter, was approaching spring break in fourth grade. And she also worked really hard for a couple of months for a small role she had in a Wizard of Oz play in our community. But then the schools closed. And that play was canceled the week of dress rehearsals. She was devastated, as you can imagine, 
as a fourth grader could be, but kids are resilient. But throughout that spring and early summer, we saw basketball seasons canceled, track events canceled, proms and graduations abruptly ended and canceled. And these kids did nothing wrong. A few days after the lockdown began, the coronavirus uh, task force began messaging that was 15 days to slow the spread. In hindsight, those 15 days were just the beginning of a deliberate manipulation campaign from government bureaucrats. And it greatly tested the American people's willingness to try and do the right thing for their community. What, did, what was the result? The middle class was crushed. And sadly, those elected leaders that we needed to say, stop, slow down, they just weren't able to do it. My three-year-old can count to 15, but you know what she can't count to? May 11th, 2023. That's the date that the emergency declaration for the coronavirus pandemic is scheduled to come to an end. And we're paying the consequences still today. Last July, inflation reached 9.1%, the highest in over 41 years. Now it's at 6%. But that doesn't mean inflation is going down. You see, inflation is measured year over year. So if you look at the incompetence of the Biden administration's approach to taming inflation, it's only made things worse. Inflation has increased 16% since the coronavirus began in 2020. Many refer to inflation as the hidden tax. Well, that hidden tax cost us 58 days of work out of the year that vanished like a bad magic trick. Nearly two full months of earning power gone just through inflation since COVID. Well, I remember walking Natalyn back to school her, her first day back about a year later when schools reopened. The school was clear that students needed to wear a mask and they wouldn't be admitted inside if they tested uh, for a, a very slight fever or temperature. We walked up to school to find a really, really long line of parents and students lined up two by two all around the school. And I watched my daughter endure the required protocols, mask mandates, including having that temperature taken in order just to go back to the classroom. I was infuriated, and I know many parents throughout the country felt exactly the same way. As I walked back home alone, I was more emotional that day than the day I dropped Natalyn off at kindergarten. I hope I don't get emotional like that again, walking her anywhere until the day I walk her down the aisle. And we needed our political leaders to stand up for children, not make them feel responsible for the pandemic. So why were the American people so sheepish in allowing our freedoms to be infringed upon? The elevation, the elevation of Dr. Fauci and his propaganda pushed and echoed through many in the media was intended to damage President Trump's re-election chances. And back up to 2016, the media gave Trump all the attention he could handle because they didn't think he could actually defeat Hillary. But that didn't work. Trump won a historic presidential election. Unfortunately, two short years later in 2018, during those midterms, radicals like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the Socialist Squad got elected and they used their new House majority to go after Trump. He had to spend the next two years defending himself against impeachment and against the Democrat House of Representatives led by Nancy Pelosi. So how lost is our culture when a concert or a sporting event can attract 75,000 people pretty easily, but a political rally involving our nation's leader can't even attract 50 people? If you don't believe me, many of Joe Biden's 2020 rallies are still available on YouTube there is definitely a reason they kept them in the basement. But we gotta take back our culture and reprioritize the nuclear family. There's a, a, a thing called the success sequence. And this is a study that a, another think tank has done. And it talks about how individuals are most likely to achieve prosperity through four different things in a direct pattern. One is to obtain a college education Two is to get a job. Three 
is to get married, and four is to have children. And if you do things out of that sequence, you're less likely to have the upward mobility to jump up into the next quintile. Well, no parent looks at their son or daughter in the eyes and hopes or prays for them to be unsuccessful. We all want a better America for the next generation. Today's wake-up call is that our generation is at risk of leaving the next generation worse off than we were for the first time in American history. We need to fight for families and we need to fight for freedom. A Christian purpose in life is simple, to glorify God in all we do. We often fall short, but we love and worship a God that knows we are sinners and imperfect, but forgives us for our sins and loves us anyway. Now, we're once again on an important election cycle. And while the focus seems to be consolidating around presidential politics, the work of a new president, a Republican president, will be limited or unlimited depending on control of the United States Senate and the House of Representatives. It takes all of us to win. I don't think anybody wants a 51-49 Republican Senate because that's still not a Senate that can get the accomplishments over the finish line to enact a presidential mandate. We need a way of election, and we were unable to get that, like Kellyanne Conway talked about last night, for a number of reasons. But we need to step back, and we need to fight back. We need to organize, persuade our neighbors, and we need to win. A few months back, I witnessed 21 Americans build a coalition to transform the broken House of Representatives. Later today, you're going to hear from House Freedom Caucus Chairman Scott Perry, my good friend. <laughs> Mr. Perry led an effort to restore power to all representatives and limit the political oligarchy in Washington, D.C. Career politicians like Bob Casey and my senator, Tim Kaine in Virginia, are totally disconnected from the people. A government of the people, by the people, and for the people must be responsive to the American people. And that's why term limits are important. Presidents are term limited. Why aren't senators and representatives? The window of opportunity to do all this is open now. People crave new leadership. People tire of political arrogance and when politicians lose their way, they deserve to be replaced. Everyone on the left likes to talk about all the free stuff that they will give you. But let's talk about what that radicalized Democrat Party took from you. They took away your doctor with Obamacare. They took away your freedoms during the coronavirus pandemic, including the First Amendment freedoms. Freedom to speech. They censored us whenever we talked about the coronavirus pandemic in a negative fashion. The freedom to petition government for grievances in person. They closed the Capitol complex. You could only get in if you were escorted by a member of Congress or their staff. So what does that do that actually just protects the power within Washington? It doesn't open it up to free and open society. And of course, they attacked religion by forcing the lockdown on churches throughout America. They took away our self-sufficiency. For many of you, they took away your jobs. They locked us down. They hurt our families. They closed small businesses while keeping mega corporations open. They took away our parental rights in the classroom. They threatened our individual freedoms and responsibility. They took away safe communities, this dangerous rhetoric of defunding the police. I don't think anybody feels safer when we don't have cops in our, in our communities. They took away energy independence. And they're taking away American sovereignty with millions of illegal immigrants flowing across the southern border. What else do they want to take away? Well, they want to continue to take away our free, our free speech rights. They want to take away our Second Amendment rights. They want to take away our right to a speedy trial. And if you don't believe me, ask me why those folks after January 6 haven't been charged or received their trials yet. They want to abolish Medicare. 
We need to save Medicare for seniors. They want to take away parental rights and school freedom. Joe Biden has been open about his disdain for charter schools. So what more do you have to lose? What more do your independent friends and neighbors have to lose? What do you have to gain for voting for a new conservative leader? We need to fight back and save Medicare. We need to fight back and save Social Security. We need to fight back and save high quality health care. We need to fight back and save the family. We need to fight back and save the church. We need to fight back and save parental rights. And we need to fight back and save safe communities. We need to fight back and save the middle class. We need to fight. So I just want to thank everybody for listening to me today. It's such an honor to be with the PLC. I want everybody here to be re-engaged in the community because 2024 is just around the corner. It's going to take all of us. Stand up and fight. Thank you.